We talk about the, the lost lives, of course we do. But what about the lost opportunities for the living victims and survivors? Yeah. Lost opportunities in employment, in education, in social life, in family life and all the rest. I mean, there are many different narratives. We talk about there are two narratives. There are not two narratives. There are many, many different narratives. I deal with people from my community who were killed, who had loved ones killed by Republicans or were injured by Republicans or, you know, had, had injuries as a result of punishment beatings and, and many other issues. So th this is not a, as narrow as people would like to make it. I think that we do need to broaden it out. We do need to look at all of the issues. It's a massive, massive subject like that, and there's people walking about badly traumatised in society. If you take a map of the hotspots, the troubles, places like North Belfast, and then you take a, a contemporary, a modern map of mental health issues, and those hotspots, you've got a match. Yeah, North absolutely. Belfast, for example. There was an accountability and an accounting for that from the British state after many, many years. Mm -hmm. And then once that process had taken its course, mm -hmm. you were able to see the processes of peace and reconciliation take a primary role. Mm -hmm. We need to discover a bit of equilibrium between memory and hope. The memory uh, has is dominating and it's eclipsing hope. And, 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 and therefore, therefore, we're in a maze. There's particularly something about children and women whose experience has been completely overlooked during our conflict and often were the most harmed during our conflict. Um, you know, so we, we need to appreciate that. People are listening to us and people that are listening are people maybe that can help to point us forward.